My name is John Fiddler, and today I'm going to talk to you about a company <coughs> co-founded called Nature Bites. We are all about reconnecting people with wildlife through digital technologies. Um, the idea basically came about from this motley crew here. Uh, here are the three co-founders, myself, John Fiddler, um, in the middle, Alistair Davis, who's a technical specialist at London Zoo, um, and also a Shuttleworth fellow, and Stephen Mower, um, uh, an ecologi uh, conservation ecologist who also worked at London Zoo, but now works on uh, Nature Bites. So if you've got any questions afterwards, myself, is here to talk about Nature Bites with Steve, I'm also happy to answer any questions. So who are we to start off with? Why did we come up with this idea? So as I talked about, um, Steve himself has actually worked on various projects in London Zoo um, before he started Nature Bites, and here's one of them actually, he was out on the island. I don't know if any of you have seen the latest Star Wars movie, where they've got the little uh, puffin things in it. Steve actually had to go out to that island in Ireland to, uh, to monitor puffins, it was part of that whole project. So, uh, you know, we're very, we feel very strongly around the areas of conservation and stuff, who's a technical specialist, as I've talked about. He goes out to islands, for instance, and puts tags onto turtles that he's developed and designed. And he's currently uh, working on projects where he's creating these open source tags that can be used within conservation for bringing the costs down. Um, and myself, um, I'm the actual, I'm very relative to the whole space of 3D. I'm the 3D designer for our product. Um, but my background, actually, I've also got another company called Modeler. I um, recently just worked with Reebok on the global advertisement campaign where I created a product for them within the space of six weeks, which is this mask that looks like something out of Batman, but it's not. It's, uh, it's a, what's called an altitude training mask um, used to restrict and improve airflow. So I've just worked on that recently. But my background's in 3D design, 3D printing. I've been using the technologies we can see out there. For over 13 years now, I've um, actually done my, part of my master's here at the university um, on the study. So we kind of have all come from different areas but have one key thing in common that we're very passionate about conservation and the state of conservation at the moment. So as I'm sure you're aware that at the moment there's big problems with conservation, okay? This is a fact that is very worrying, 6% of wildlife has been lost. Um, over the last 30 years. So actually you might see today in the news, uh, the news about a white rhino, the last the male white rhinos has uh, passed away, which is unfortunate. So that species will be no longer. So this is a big problem and something that we as three people wanted to address. Another key factor is that also four in five young people are disconnected from nature. This was a stat found out by the RSPB. So another big problem, obviously, if you know, our young people don't care, then the, the, the animals will kind of disappear at a larger rate. So we need to get them engaged. How are we going to do this? So we set about wanting to create Nature Bites, OK? Um, and Nature Bites, as I talked about, is all about using technology in order to basically reconnect people with nature. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing to that and we can see kind of here on some of the activities we said about doing actually that was in, uh, we went to a festival and run our activity there with a load of kids and we're going to be going into schools and working with young people to try and engage them in conservation. So you're asking how are we doing that? Okay, so here we have our first product. This is the Wildlife Camera Track Kit. Why is it special? Why is it different? Have any of you guys used uh, wildlife camera traps for capturing images of animals. So what this does basically is you put it outside remotely and leave it in the garden it remotely takes pictures of animals. But what's different about this is the fact that it centres around this little thing here. Anybody know what that is? This is old computer? Um, Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi, yes. One of the largest selling computers within the UK. So we've designed a product around the Raspberry Pi but the great thing about this is that it also <coughs> comes as our Raspberry Pi in kit form. And the way it works is it uses a sensor, a camera, um, and basically the user assembles <coughs> all the components. So we get all the components, we assemble them together in kit form, and we learn about electronics. And then if we want to dabble, we can learn about coding as well, because you can code the Raspberry Pi to do different things. You can then put it outside, and what this piece of equipment does is it will remotely capture the images of whatever goes in front of it. So this little sensor here is a PIR, so it's heat sensored. 
so it'll activate the camera, um, so it takes pictures of foxes, birds, and so forth. So here we go, we've got all the components that the user then will assemble together um, in kit form, and it also uses a rechargeable battery as well. So we've had to source all of these components from around, centered around the Raspberry Pi, use the Raspberry Pi camera, and then the user will assemble it. So we've been doing this within schools and everything. So here we can see, kind of, this is an age group of year, I think this is year, uh, year eight at an all-girls school down in South London, assembling one of our wildlife camera trap kits, basically. So it's really easy to use, and we designed it specially, so it doesn't require any previous experience of electronics. The user gets it, the user screws, it can be assembled within 40 minutes, and we've worked very hard on designing a manual that's kind of very easy to use, and the teacher, therefore, doesn't need any knowledge of that. And then once they get it, they can put it outside into the garden. This was actually from the Kickstarter campaign, so, so that's it being tied to a tree. Um, and we've also designed special add-ons as well. Uh, this is our bird feeder hanger. So you can hang it outside and uh, you, this is actually laser cut, the design here. Um, you add a recycled bottle to it, put some bird feeder in, and you can capture images of birds. Now, our journey doesn't stop there, okay? So the important factor is that once we've got all this information um, and somebody's captured the images, we then wanted to be able to <coughs> use the data, okay? And use the data for conservation purposes. So then we've got our online hub where people can come along to upload their images and videos. So then each user will have their own place to upload the images and then Mark will be able to put on a map. And then we can start to study and set wildlife conservation projects for people and challenges. Okay, so here, so, so that's our, the way that our product works and comes together. And I kind of wanted to just go back on how the 3D tools that we've used have been incorporated into that. So we can see some images here caught from the camera. Um, my favorite, actually one of my favorite is the uh, less spot, great spotted woodpecker in the corner there. Um, the deer, these are actually captured. I, I was uh, lucky enough to grow up on a farm, so these were captured on the farm using our camera. So I wanted to take you through the journey also about, as, a, as, as this is startup, how did we go about creating our product, all right, using the technologies outside. So this was actually the beginning of our uh, product journey, okay, and we got funding in the start from a group called Nesta, and we got funding from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and this was the slide that we used in our presentation about nature bites. Um, and it was pitching the idea of the wildlife camera trap kit, and this is my first render. So I use a program called SolidWorks, I don't know if you're familiar with that, um, and then we render up and we create our product within 3D, and we could use those renders to showcase in our presentations what it looks like. Um, obviously not what the final thing looks like. This image is actually pretty wrong, does anybody know why? Not, uh, uh, hedgehogs are nocturnal, okay? So, uh, yeah, if you do see a hedgehog out in the daylight, it's probably not very well. So, yeah, this is where it all started off. So we were like, great, we've got our idea, we've got a bit of funding. We then started to develop our idea, okay? So we bought one of these. Is anybody familiar with this? Yeah? Um, this is an Ultimaker. I'm not sure if Ultimaker are actually here. But the great thing, this is a 3D printer, okay? So we actually purchased, and actually I purchased this one and assembled it back in 20, 2012 from scratch. So got all the components, assembled it together. And basically we bought one of these because therefore the great thing about the 3D printer and having a desktop version, it would allow us to make things straight away from our 3D CAD files. But the great thing about these 3D systems, these, these new technologies were they would allow us to make things really cost effectively and cheaply. So what I mean by that is this part that we can see being made on there, one of these would only cost us three, three pounds to produce, okay, using one of these desktop printers. But there's other methodologies that we could have used that would be a lot more expensive. So these kind of, as a small um, company, allowed us to open up to be able to produce things a lot cheaper than they would have cost in the past. So this is a great bit of kit for doing so and could just iterate straight from our 3D CAD files. So that was actually one of the first off our uh, machine. And the reason I just wanted to go back why we've gone with the triangulated design is because it kind of refers back to what's called an STL file, okay, that's used to create 
uh, the, the 3D models and 3D parts. So the triangulated design is all kind of bogues back to that whole 3D printed file. So we created all of our parts using 3D printers that allowed us to do things really quickly, effectively. Then once we've done that, we actually could straight from our 3D parts created our, just using SolidWorks, our tooling as well. And we had to kind of, this is the actual complex tooling that was created straight from SolidWorks. And we basically funded this through a Kickstarter campaign. As a small company, we used uh, 3D prints within our video. And then we first, we, then we had to fund the actual kind of tooling that cost 26,000 uh, from a Kickstarter campaign. So this came straight from our 3D file again um, and was created. And there we can see some of the 3D parts that were done. So just as a team of three people using these technologies, you know, and, and having those skills in house allowed us to do things very cost effectively. And then something moving on from our design, the design's also been done so that we can have add-ons that can be added on to the design so that it can be used for many different things. So this is actually an example of where we're going to be able to add on a weather station. And we've got these that are going to be going up uh, onto the top of Canary Wharf, I think, and to different positions around the UK. So we've got lighthouses where we're going to have the Raspberry Pi weather station featured on top. So it's kind of an example of how we're doing things quickly. Then I just wanted to talk about another project that we were involved with um, that was kind of, and how we kind of went about doing this project really quickly. So this was a bird box that was designed for something called Experilag. So the Brussels Natural History Museum or Museum of Natural Sciences approached us and they wanted us to create, using our same technology, a bird box version, basically, that they could then send out to, I think, around 300 schools around Belgium, and therefore they could monitor the breeding period of the great tit. So we actually went about producing a bird box version that then featured and went out to over 300 schools. So me and Steve actually assembled these, okay? So the great thing about this is that it, um, basically, the bird box links over Ethernet into the computer and then the students can monitor exactly what's going on within the bird box. So they can monitor the whole per breeding period of the great tip. Um, and all these parts here that you can see were used, created um, using a laser cutter uh, straight from our 3D file. And then we basically uh, prototyped the case using injection molding uh, with a company called Proto Tool actually. And the great thing about this was it was done within, I think it's, we've done, we done this project within about six weeks, okay, so the actual 3D uh, injection molding case was produced through a company and managed to produce it within two weeks. And then once we built the bird boxes, they were sent out to Brussels and used to monitor the, the reading period of Brexit. So that's a little bit of insight I thought would give you into Nature Bites. Um, our kits are available to buy and we're currently also looking at the moment for funding and investment and partners. So if you're interested in what we're all about, please do come and talk to us or ask any questions for afterwards. Okay, thank you.